What's up guys, it's Emil Centaur Eang here. What I'm going to be doing in this video, in terms of my workout, um, I have some really cool mobility work I do in the beginning. If you're curious about the shirt I'm wearing, it is the squat face shirt from Chris Stuffin. I'll have a link in the description box so you guys can check it out. It's really good quality. I felt really bad for wearing it during a workout. That's why I think I'm just going to buy myself a second because I just really, really, really like that shirt. Um, Doing, I'm going to be squatting 315s for sixes, three sets, deadlifting 395 for six for three sets, and then doing some bicep work. Uh, now, what I'm going to be talking about in this video is my prep, uh, the plan that we had. I'm working with the Ivory Latino, Alberto Nunez from 3DMJ. We've been working together since the end of December. Um, so I'm going to be talking about our plan that we had, uh, my performance levels and how they've differed from beginning until now, how my cardio has differed and then how my macros have differed from then till now. I'll also be answering all the questions that you guys had from Instagram um, about my prep. And I'm going to try and go through those fairly fast because I do not want this to be a long video. Okay, let's get right into it. Um, the plan that we had in this prep was to do three shows. Uh, that was the NGA Folsom show as a warm-up, the California Muscle Mayhem in July, which I won both of those shows, or I should say we won both of those shows, and then the WNBF Worlds, which is in November 13th and 14th, and that's pretty much the WNBF natural version of the NPC Olympia. Um, now we have a fourth show on the table, which is in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It's on October 24th, and I have to do that show so I can qualify for the November 13th and 14th show Worlds. Uh, I'm gonna do a show in between that though. I'm gonna keep that a secret for now because it's pretty damn cool. Hopefully I actually even do it, so I hope I'm not talking for nothing. Anyway, in terms of performance from the beginning of this prep, um, I believe our main goal was to try and maintain as much strength as possible as we got leaner and leaner and leaner. And that was working great for four or five months. Uh, at the beginning, my squat max was around 540, my deadlift max was around 600 to 610, and my bench max was around 365. Now, I am way below that. But we were actually getting stronger um, as the prep went by just because we didn't really change anything about my volume. Before I worked with Alberto, I was doing a lot of volume already and we just kept that volume. And actually, he increased the volume a bit um, as we started working. And it worked well. Uh, but as you get leaner and leaner and your leverage is change and you lose body fat, no matter how much you're eating, you're gonna get weaker. And that started happening about five months in. My performance levels went down. And right now, I don't even know if you notice, in this video, when I'm squatting 315 and I'm deadlifting 395, it feels pretty hard. And it, 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 it's kind of crappy that <laughs> the weight that I used to do as warm-up sets is now just, it feels stressful. So if you are going to do a prep, just realize that you will get weaker, but understand that your goal shouldn't be to drastically cut your volume when you're starting off. You want to maintain your volume or even increase your volume as time goes by. And then as you notice your performance starts to get worse and worse, don't push it. Just try to keep the volume out of place where it's not too little and it's not too much where you'll get yourself injured. In terms of my macros, um, we started off with macros around 700 carbs because before I worked with him, I I brought my carbs up a ton. I brought my macros up a ton. So we started off with 700 carbs, 70 to 80 fats, and 230 grams of protein. Um, over time, our macros had to decrease, and now I'm at 375 carbs, 40 fats, and 250 grams of protein. Cardio, at the beginning, we had none, which was awesome. But now we have 850 cal kcals three times a week. Uh, low intensity steady state cardio, but on one of those days I'm playing soccer just because I find that fun. So I'm doing two days at 850 kcals and one day of soccer. Um, if you're doing prep, I mean, you don't have to do list cardio. Um, if you don't enjoy list cardio, you can always do hit, but just have the understanding that it will impede your training depending on how you schedule it. So a smart thing to do if you want to do hit cardio is maybe have your training day two days after that cardio session so that you can have some time to recover. I believe I said session, so whatever. I think that's it. So let's get right to the questions. Um, from Instagram. The enormous infant asks me, "How much do my does my right nipple? How much does my right nipple weigh?" I don't know. Um, now, QX Fitness asks me, "Management of plateaus and cardio criteria, please, bro. I just told you my cardio criteria. Management of plateaus. We never really had a harsh plateaus. We never really had a harsh plateaus. Harsh plateaus. Harsh plateaus. Harsh plateaus." Um, 
there was never really a time where I was really, really sticking, but we have had a good a good amount of diet breaks every now and then. So after the mayhem, we had a week where I just had a calorie goal, um, and I could eat how many fats and carbs I wanted, but in terms of protein, we had to count that. Uh, so uh, that was that. But yeah, there really we haven't really had to do anything crazy for plateaus. Um, and usually you shouldn't really have to do that during prep. There really shouldn't be any harsh plateaus that you can't get past if you're doing the right things like giving yourself diet breaks or having decent structured refeeds if necessary because they're not always necessary. But yeah, um, Slamajama94 asks, have there been any significant joint problems during your prep? What do you suggest someone should do if they are having these problems during their prep? Thanks in advance. I haven't had any specific joint problems. Um, I believe that a lot of people have joint problems because their mechanics on their lifts are bad and they're doing a lot of compound lifts with bad mechanics. So first off, get your mechanics fixed. Second off, you should be working on a decent amount of mobility in terms of your upper body and your lower body, especially in the hips um, and the shoulders, the balls and sockets. And also, um, Potentially glucosamine could help. It's like WD-40 for the joints. I take two tablets a day. I've been taking it for quite a long time. And it does help my joints, you know, it helps them a bit. But I think that your focus should be mobility work and making sure your mechanics are on point. So go get on Becoming a Supple Lover by Kelly Sturette and just look up his videos on YouTube because he has a ton of free resources on YouTube. I also have a mobility video for um, warming up before your leg day. Just that's one of my videos on my channel, so go check it out. I'm at six minutes. Viet Strength, how do I sleep at night when I'm hungry? I just sleep. Um, that killed me. Any sleeping enhancing subs or just like YOLO? I do use one, it's called Valerian Root. Okay, totally natural, guys. Um, I use it every now and then, I don't use it all the time because I generally don't have problems sleeping, but I would suggest that you pick that up um, if you want to try it out. It really has helped me on days, on nights that I just want to get really, really deep sleep, but I don't take it too often just because I don't want to get dependent on it to be able to get a good night's rest. So maybe I'll take it once or twice a week, sometimes three times if I'm really stressed or something like that. Jason Park, have I ever come across a point where I am asking myself, why am I doing this? Um, and if so, how did I overcome that? I've never really come across a point in my prep, at least in my prep, that I've said, why am I doing it? Because I've always known in the beginning why I was doing it. I have my personal reasons why I'm doing this. Um, I really just want to see what can be achieved. Um, I've been training for 10 years now. I want to see if and when I reach the pinnacle of, in terms of competing naturally, how, I'll do against the guys, how I will do against the guys at the top um, at, as a young guy. I just want to see what I'll, what kind of what I'll be able to do against them. I don't have any predictions, but I just I that's been my why since the beginning. Also, I really enjoy it. But if you're at a point where I know you're not prepping right now, Jason, but um, if like if it's with work or if you're doing whatever you're doing, if you're coaching or whatever, um, always think about why you're doing it and have that drive you no matter what, no matter what kind of problems or troubles happen. Just know that that is part of the process. And keep fucking going. Shit, I don't like cursing. Um, next question, stoner detone or stoner tone. The optimal protocol for contest prep is a weight loss of one to two pounds per week. If you lose more than this, you will lose more muscle. But what happened if your weight loss is between zero, zero, okay, it's 0.5 pounds a week. Um, now, this is the thing, everyone, if, I'm a 240 pound guy, so one pound is a, f it's a, l a smaller percentage than a guy that's losing a pound a week at 160 pounds. Um, I really think that you should start looking at the mirror, use the, use the scale as a tracker just to see how you're trending, um, but at this point in my prep, I'm not even really losing a pound a week. Um, it, some weeks I'm not even losing a pound, but every single week, every single three days, I'm looking leaner and leaner and leaner. So, um, yes, there, there is a good idea that you need to be losing some kind of weight, and the scale is a teller of losing weight, but weight isn't the only thing. Um, it, it's not the only thing. You know, you will be looking leaner over time. You want to use that as a tell. Uh, and yeah, just... I don't think that it should be one to two pounds a week for everyone because um, some people they may be losing slower but they may be continuously getting leaner over time and if they're still on track for their shows shit the slow weight loss is fine it shouldn't be the only teller though 
Now, um, I think that answers your question. Heavy Wrestler asks, with you wanting to judo and all, how far into your prep do you think you would be able to go and still perform optimally? This has to do with me wrestling and cutting weight. I'm not doing judo right now, I'm gonna do that after my prep. I don't think, if I were doing a contest prep, I don't think I would do martial arts all the way through my contest prep. Just because martial arts, there is a degree of bodily damage, so you will be getting hit or thrown or this and that, and that will impede on training. So I think at a certain point, I would probably stop doing judo, at least on the contest prep that I do two to three years from now. Um, I wouldn't do judo deep into my contest prep, and if I did, I may, be do, I may do some minimal stuff. Um, but uh, I think that it would impede on performance if I did it a lot deep into my prep. So for you as a wrestler, I think you're prepping um, and I also think that you should be very careful. I think that if you're doing wrestling, you should do drills. You shouldn't do anything where you're being thrown a lot. Um, you could do drills as cardio, but just understand that if you go too intense, you want to give yourself some time before your next training session to recover from that damage. Mario S. Gibbs asks, do you ever find yourself just going through the motions deeper into my prep, especially six, week, six weeks out, I find my workouts to be robotic. Dude, at this point, I'm really, um, I am going through the motions. I'm just trying to survive my workouts. I'm making sure to mobilize and just warm up a lot because I know that I'm injury prone at this point. Um, but yeah, things do feel a bit robotic, but I still try and push myself in the gym even though I'm feeling like crap. So that answers your question. Uh, Jose Vidal asks, how, how do you go over your cows if you mess up on a diet? Or if you don't feel like counting, but you don't want to YOLO? Uh, so I, I, I have a feeling that you're saying, if I go over on calories one day, how do I recover from it? Um, if my goal is 375 carbs, and let's say one day I had 500, the next day I'd maybe cut off 100 for my carbs and only eat 275 carbs. I've messed up on my macros multiple times on this prep. It has not been perfect. Um, so I think that if you like, just, ha you know your weekly caloric intake, okay? Um, so you should maybe think about your weekly caloric intake, and if you've already, like if you surplus 200 carbs on one day, maybe on your next two days, eat 100 carbs less on that day, and then eat 100 carbs less on the next day so that you can just get back what you went over on. So I think that answers your question. Um, Jim Gnome, how do I present, prevent losing strength? Well, we prevented losing strength by making sure that strength was a focus as we went on during prep, but it is inevitable that you will lose strength as you get to, a, to this kind of body fat level. Um, you can be lean and still be very strong, but when you get to the contest prep type leanness, uh, you're going to be weak. And... I believe that's it. I have a question of the day that I want you guys to answer, alright? Um, what made you start training? And how has training changed your life? So if you watch this video, I want you to go down to the comments right now, spend one minute, and tell me why, why did you start training and how has it changed your life? All you lurkers, comment and leave, leave and answer that question down there, okay? I don't like lurkers. Um, this is Nsima the Centaur Eang. Find me on Instagram, at the Nighty Professor. Comment, subscribe, like the video, share the video. Yes, I said share the video. Um, and yeah, leave a comment below. Lurkers, stop lurking. Comment below. Let me know what you think of the video. Let me know if you have anything you want me to talk about in the future. I'm sorry this video went on so long. This is Insima Centaur, Insima the Centaur Inyang from Break the Bar. And I'll talk to you all very soon.